Hello, welcome to my tech farm. My name is Igor and in this video I am testing antibacterial TPU filaments and I will compare them to the regular flexible filaments and these two boxes are sent to me by the eSAN in exchange for a review. On this channel I already tested earlier antibacterial PLA filaments because I work on food engineering department and I'm searching for possibilities using of significant parts in food industry. Sometimes it means a direct contact with the food. Now, result of that video is that uh, these metallic ions, which are added to those uh, PLA antibacterial filaments, will reduce the bacteria colonies to one fourth or one fifth. So this is still not 100% perfect solution. And on the website, actually, I couldn't find examples that they are used in this kind of applications, but more like in medical applications or where we have direct contact with the skin. Just two quick examples, uh, shoes, for example, from TPU flexible filament, or where I'm using those antibacterial PLA filaments are printing some toys for my youngest daughter, for example, a whistle, which sometimes she puts in her mouth. Just a quick quote from their website. It says, excellent antibacterial and antifungal effect. The antibacterial rate against Escherichia coli and the Streptococcus aureus is as high as 99.9% and the antifungal grade can reach grade zero. At first I will test the mechanical properties and compare them with the regular TPU filament and I will print some test cups and I will send them to University of Novi Sad because we have this cooperation in this kind of research and they will do some antibacterial testings too. If you want to know more about food safe solutions, I have uh, several videos about these topics. I will put some links down in the description. Don't be confused like I was. Only when I finished this video, I noticed that they changed the product name in the meantime. Let's see content of the box. ETPU antibacteria and printing temperature between 220 and 250 degrees Celsius and the bed temperature between 45 and 60. Well, I will start probably the lowest temperature because TPU may stick too good to the PEI sheets. And this is regular TPU with hardness same 95 on Shorey scale and printing temperature between 210 and 240 degrees Celsius and the bed temperature no heat. Hmm. As you can see, the antibacterial is in this natural transparent color and the regular TPU in black. And this is the back side. The printing I will start with the regular TPU. It is hard to push because it's flexible, so I will just extrude it over the menu. And I will print everything on NS3 V2, which is equipped with Microsys NG Direct Drive Extruder, which is great for flexible filaments because the distance between pulleys and the hot end is very small. These are test cups for the bacterial testing and they don't look too nice. I had to do some corrections in E-steps and disable the retraction and you will see in a few seconds it's as much nicer printing. This was my first printing and it doesn't look good, even the first layer. And then I corrected the E-step because I had to change that and I disabled the Z-hop and retraction and then I got these parts which uh, looks much better, less stringing and much nicer surface finish. I printed all my mechanical test objects at once on 230 degrees Celsius. Hmm, printed in two hours, confirm. Additionally, nine pieces of smaller test cups for the bacterial testing. My colleagues from University of Novi Sad asked for them. End of the filament locked and it goes to the receivable bag with some silica gel inside. And now antibacterial filament. from black to white or natural, always need a lot of filament to clean it from the previous color. The first layer is almost finished and it looks good and I hope it will not stick too good to this PI sheet. But it has more swinging than the regular TPU. But the adhesion is very similar. And these samples goes to the University of Novi Sad for the bacterial testing. And again, all my Hanukkah test objects printed at once, but I'm still not happy with a lot of stringing. Test objects are printed too, but I, again I can see a lot of stringing, so I decided uh, to try to dry the filament because maybe it is full of moisture, but theoretically it is out of the box. I will dry it maybe a couple of hours and then I will try to print directly from the filament dryer. After 4 hours of drying on approximately 50-55 degrees Celsius in a dry environment, 
I am repeating those two cups to see if I will get better quality of the surface and less stringing and as you can see I am printing directly from the filament dryer. It looks like I have uh, less stringing but now let's compare the quality. Wow, this is a great example how important is a filament dryer. Unfortunately it looks like this filament is full of moisture out of the box but good news is that uh, even the cheapest filament dryer can dry it and you will get much nicer printing. So even less stringing and uh, I can partly see that how smooth is the surface and almost transparent compared to these two. I will dry the filament maybe a couple of hours more and then I will wrap in those two vertical test objects to see how moisture has the effect of the layer adhesion. And with every printing I have less and less stringing and the object looks nicer. And the progress is quite obvious, so the first, second and the third attempt with even nicer surface and less horizontal lines because drying during the printing is the best because the spool is rotating. Two test objects for the layer adhesion test after the drying and I can see they are much cleaner and with less stringing. I'm starting with tensile or pulling test, the smallest cross section area is 4 by 4 millimeters. And I'm starting with the regular TPU. And this is the antibacterial version. Well, this break looks much healthier compared to this one, so maybe this is a sign that antibacterial TPU has better layer adhesion, but I will find that soon in the next experiment. And now the layer adhesion test, these test objects are printed in vertical position, and the smallest cross section array is 4 by 4 mm. Now the antibacterial, but first with the wet version, you know, out of the box. And now dried versions. Now definitely I like better the deformation of the antibacterial TPU compared to the regular because it doesn't break so suddenly and I can feel that prolongation before the break. And this is my washer test. I will tie them exactly 3 rotation, that's 3 mm on this M6 bolt. And I will measure the maximal torque and then after one day I will measure the untightening torque. Okay. 2.4, 1.3, 1.5 and tomorrow I will measure how much torque I need for untightening these bolts. And now after one day let's uh, check the untightening torque. In the meantime I already measured the deformation on these script test objects. One point two, one point two, zero point eight, zero point nine. Now, after approximately twenty minutes without load, let's measure the dimension to see the permanent deformation. The original size is fifteen millimeters. So more permanent deformation on antibacterial TPU. Creeping test with these uh, small rings, uh, the thickness is only 2 volts and I will measure the deformation under the constant load which will be 1.25 kilograms. This is the fifth day and actually they even stopped with deformation, so I'm removing the load now. And after this test they have some permanent deformation too. I decided to do the full testing method with these TPU materials. These are those additional test specimens to complete my flexible material testing. This is the ring where I'm measuring the compression and the bending. 1.25 kg load and the deformation on the start is 2.31 mm and after one minute it is 3.03 mm and 3.16 after two minutes. Now this is antimicrobial TPU 
placing the load. Start deformation 3.49, so more than with the regular TPU. And I will measure here, you can see 4.97 after two minutes. And basically I cannot see any visual deformation on them. And then this is some kind of uh, pulling or tensile and uh, bending test. Again, 1.25 kilogram load on it. The start dimensions 52.16 millimeters and after two minutes 52.42. And this is now antimicrobial TPU. Start deformation 52.76 and after two minutes 53.14. And again, I cannot see any visual deformation on them. This part of the testing is made by University of Novi Sad. They use the milk, they place it into these uh, test cups and leave it there. And then they had two cleaning methods. One is with the dish soap and the other is with the boiling. And I'm not familiar with this part, so they did this antimicrobial testing. So basically these uh, microbes are the, from the environment. Here you can see the antimicrobial test cups. And this graph is summary of the results. First, so data is the CFU units per square centimeters of the test cups after boiling as a cleaning method. And in both cases, this is very close to zero, these values. Only on one test cup, TPU antimicrobial, there was some contamination, but this is also very close to zero. More important are last two data. And these test objects were cleaned with the dish soap. And here we can see the effect of the TPU antimicrobial filament because uh, in this case, the CFU units uh, were reduced to, let's say 60% approximately. Of course, not 99% like in the specifications, but these are different bacteria. These are from environment after that contamination of the cups with the milk. On the website, they claim that this filament is resistant to the mold erosion. This testing is done by me, not a professional, but uh, I did my best. I placed some moldy jam into test cups and leave it in the bag for two days. I was curious if the mold will stick to the printed objects or not. On the second day, I took out the cups to visually analyze them. I'm not sure is it visible on screen too, but definitely I can see some mold on the walls of the regular TPU and the antimicrobial version looks much cleaner. Not a scientific approach, but according to this test, it looks like it has a positive effect against the molds too. Well, actually, I didn't know that my colleagues from Novi Sad we do the boiling test too, so I decided to do the temperature test because I want to record the temperature of the first deformation. Those two objects on the left side are these TPUs from this experiment. That third one is um, some semi-flex PLA from my different experiment because I'm doing parallel several testings. And approximately 104 degrees Celsius, I could notice some deformations on these two TPU test objects. In experiment, I was going up to 150 degrees Celsius, and here I stopped the oven. Immediately after the test, I can see that they are softer compared when they are on the room temperature, and they have the similar deformation. Let's analyze the data in this Excel table, which you can download from my website. I will start with the creep test, and these are those dimensions directly measured, but what we need is the difference between two days. And that's why I prepared this table, and this is presented on this graph. And we can see some bigger creeping on the first day. Only after maybe third or fourth day, it was close to the zero, so it's uh, almost stopped with the creeping. Uh, the rest of the data I will show you on the charts. The tensile test, uh, very similar values here. The prolongation, here we can see some difference because antibacterial was more elastic in this case. The layer adhesion, the weakest was the regular TPU. Now with the antibacterial, I had uh, two types of the objects. One was wet directly from the box and the other was after the drying. And we can see that the drying has very important effect to the layer adhesion. The ring test, that bending and compression. Uh, here we can see that the ETPU was stronger because smaller values are better. And we can also follow this creeping, you know, best is if this is constant without the changing. And this is that ring test, you know, bending and tensile. And here again, the ETPU was stronger. Now that washer test. 
uh, ETP was stronger, but uh, I wouldn't mind if it would be weaker. What is more important for me that I'm tightening torque is very close or just a little bit smaller than the tightening torque. So this is not so perfect because uh, if you use it as a washer, by time it may be weaker and the bolt may unscrew itself. The temperature test was very pleasant surprise. I did this test because my colleagues from Novisite did a boiling test and I was curious if it can really form above 100 degrees Celsius and yes, uh, close to it, but uh, yes, they can survive boiling temperatures at least for the shorter period of time. Another conclusions. Well, if we watch only the mechanical properties, in that case, the regular TPU is better in most cases compared to the antimicrobial version. But of course, if you want some antimicrobial properties, in that case, this second TPU is better because it has some positive effect against the microorganisms. Not 99% like on those specifications on the website. Of course, we tested it with the different materials. But um, anyway, I wouldn't recommend it completely to use it in the food applications. More like in some applications where the object will have a lot of contact with the skin, some, I don't know, <laughs> shoes or something like that, or where a lot of people will touch that object. It looks like now I have my regular testing methods for the flexible filaments too. The results you can download from my website, but for Patreon supporters, as always, I am starting a new sheet so they can easily compare these results to those which I did in earlier videos or I will do in future testings. If you have some additional experience with these filaments, you know a few lines in the comment section. Thank you for watching and uh, happy printing!